The debates and decisions that are shaping our continent now in Europeans. For Aris Samanos and his girlfriend Katerina, these pictures are all they have left of years of hard work. In just hours on the 25th of August, a forest fire ravaged their land in the Greek town of Styra and burned most of their 1,500 olive trees. But things could have been worse. Aris and Katerina, with the help of his daughter and a friend, managed to contain and put out the fire. They had no choice. No one came to help. It is easier to put the blame on other people, but if you have not done anything yourself, you should not criticize what the government tried to do, because everything should start first on an individual basis. The local community should have tried to do something first, and then the government should have helped us on top of that. Aris, a house builder, had painted his own home with a fire-resistant gel. It was spared. With a dry winter, a very hot summer and strong winds, all the signs were there for the fires. Aris was prepared, but others weren't. Styra is on the island of Evia. More than 50 forest fires broke out across Greece on the August 25th weekend. In Evia, five people died, but the worst was saved for the Peloponnese. The region became an inferno, killing more than 60 people and destroying entire villages. A state of emergency was declared. Prime Minister Kostas Karamanlis had called for early elections a week before. Now the election campaign was put on hold. He questioned whether some of the fires were deliberate, and the opposition accused the government of using fear for political ends. Karamanlis defended his position through his spokesman. What the Prime Minister said a couple of days ago is what common sense says, what the big majority of the Greek people say that um, so many individual fires breaking out at the same time at various spots of the country, even during night time when you didn't have any sunlight, cannot be a coincidence. An investigation into whether arson was involved did not prevent a silent demonstration in front of the parliament on August 29th. It signaled that the people were tired of political finger-pointing. Fires had also scorched Greece in June and July. Those who poured into the streets condemned the politicians for acting late and doing too little, for decades. Added to the human devastation, the material cost is estimated at well over 1 billion euros this time. Parts of the country are uninhabitable. Greenpeace says the fires stoked the younger generation's frustration over the nation's environmental track record. The demonstrations were something new. It was not organized by any political party or by any non-governmental organization, environmental organization. So it was organized by bloggers. It was about 10,000 people who came there. Dressing code was black t-shirts and no messages, no screaming, no nothing, just silent. And it was people that are just fed up with the uh, inability of the political parties or unwillingness of political, political parties to deal with something that is of high importance for, for, for them. And that's, that's really good. That's something, that's, that's a message that the political parties are receiving. To see and be seen with reconstruction partners is an immediate priority in an election campaign dominated by the fires. The Prime Minister toured the disaster zone by air, accompanied by European Commission President José Manuel Barroso. His visit came one day after the EU's Commissioner for Regions, Danuta Hubner, pledged help from the Bloc Solidarity Fund. Brussels says at least 200 million euros will be released, with more to follow. The opposition Socialist Party leader, George Papandreou, also met Hubner and Barroso. What we are facing now is an environmental climate change throughout the world, and of course Greece also. Uh, we need to be able to deal with this, first of all, by developing a sustainable economy. In our program what we have is we're talking about a green economy. We would like to see a regeneration of the whole of the Peloponnese on a new basis. Turn this tragedy upside down and make it into a new hope for a new type of economy or sustainable development. The current center-right government has made a similar pledge. Uh, in a country like Greece. Every Greek citizen gets very sensitive about their environment. This disaster shows that uh, nobody 
can show any neglect, is allowed to show any neglect as far as issues of the environment are concerned. And what we are going to do is that we are going to rebuild the Peloponnese uh, with absolute respect to the environment. Despite these promises, there's little doubt that rebuilding the damaged regions will come at a high political cost. It's estimated that the deadly fires burned more than 200,000 hectares of Greece's forest and farmland. Thousands of Greeks were displaced and the future of smaller rural regions placed in doubt. At Styrus Town Hall, residents are filling out forms reporting their losses. Like Aris, most Greeks don't have insurance and will have to rely on local and state aid to rebuild. For him, the upcoming elections are far from a priority. For the last 30 years, the two main parties have been fighting each other for power, and the only result I can show you is that most of Greece has burned. Sofia Mutsu is the mayor of Styra. She says her country and its 11 million citizens are in mourning. Personally, and I think other people too, most of the people here in Greece doesn't pay any, pay any attention in, uh, on elections. We don't really care. We had a, a big problem here and in other parts of Greece. So I think many few people take care about elections. Under national election rules, opinion polls are banned two weeks before the vote. But it's certain that the fire and Greece's current soul-searching over one of its worst tragedies since it gained independence a century and a half ago have turned the prime minister's once comfortable lead into a tight election race. Faye Karavitis is a journalist whose family's home was damaged in last year's fires. She says that most Greeks are looking for a government that will act responsibly. This is probably, I, I don't know, maybe it's a Greek thing. <laughs> it's not easy to say you're sorry uh, when you're in power. And, but that's, I think, the people would need to hear that, especially those who were fire victims would need to hear something like that. And uh, if you ask me, the, um, the, uh, the party that will win the election will be the one that convinces the people that can deal with the problems better, that can deal with the, the reconstruction of the damaged areas, that can deal with people's problems. With the race looking so close, some pundits are talking about an eventual coalition along the lines of Germany or Austria. Another sign that these fires have changed not only the country's physical landscape, but its political one as well.